In this video, I will go over the basics of creating a Qualtrics questionnaire. So the very first step of creating a questionnaire in Qualtrics is to go to the Qualtrics website and log in. So you log in with your university account. I am at Tilburg University, so I can log in with my Tilburg University account. And when you sign in, you get to the start screen. In the start screen, you will see all of these things. Um, if you have any active questionnaires, so you will see the responses of all the new questionnaires. If you don't have any, you will not have anything here to show. Uh, but for today, we will concentrate on this button below here to create a new project. So when you click on it, you can have uh, several options of guided projects, but we will start from scratch with a survey. Here we hit get started, and then we can have some input here. So we will call this the example questionnaire. Um, there's an option of putting it below uh, in a folder of a project. If you have multiple projects like me, it will be very helpful. If you don't have any project yet, you can just put it in the um, overall folder. Then there's options here as well. So it really depends on um, how uh, advanced you are with Qualtrics and whether you got um, already some other questionnaires. So sometimes you have a, a survey already stored in your library and you want to start from there, or you got an existing questionnaire from um, a Qualtrics file. Uh, but for now, I will show you how to create a blank survey project. Um, so you click there and then we create a project. Then it opens the page where you can create your own questionnaire from scratch. So here you see that uh, this is the questionnaire title that I typed in. You can choose sales changes if you want to. Then you see here how you build the questionnaire. So the questionnaire is built uh, from the top to the bottom. Um, and this will be uh, from the top, it will be what the participant is showed first. And then it, the participant works downwards. Um, important is to know that Qualtrics works in blocks. So um, there's already a default block present and there's always the end of the block, uh, the end of the survey block. Uh, this one is default, uh, but you can change it. I will show you in the end. Then um, every block corresponds to one page that the participant is seeing. Um, so um, make sure to not make the block very long because then the participant will be scrolling down, scrolling down, scrolling down um, and never hit a next button. So this can create a negative experience for the participant. So it's really helpful to create a lot of blocks and cut your questionnaires um, in parts of blocks that correspond to pages in, um, uh, in the questionnaire. Um, so the first block I usually call the demographics block. So first I always st start most of my questionnaires with um, a couple of demographic questions. If you have a very long demographic list, then um, it could still be helpful to have like kind of like a, a demographic one and a demographic two block. Uh, but for me, I think one block will be um, enough. Then um, let's say that this questionnaire is demographics and then a stress questionnaire. So this will be the stress questionnaire block and I will add the questionnaire in there later. So let's start with our demographics block. So there's uh, a lot of questions that you can pick from. So on default, you get the multiple choice question. But as you can see here, there's a lot of options in Qualtrics to um, select other types of questionnaires. So for instance, we have multiple choice, we have text entry, uh, a matrix, a slider, uh, a bigger form field, ranking order. So there's a lot of options that you can choose from. So let's start with the text entry because I want to ask what is your age in years? And then participants can just fill out their age. Then I want to have another question in this block. And this will be a multiple choice question. So here I want to ask, what is your gender? And now something happens because if I select this, Qualtics immediately recognize this as one of the default questions. Um, and is giving you some options. So this happens with uh, some of the questions, uh, not all of them, but some trigger this uh, kind of example. Um, and this can be very helpful if you like it. Uh, in this case, I do like it. So uh, male, female, non-binary, I prefer not to say. So this uh, to me is very helpful. 
um, and I will just keep it like that. Then um, for this example, my uh, demographics is done. I only need age and gender. Uh, so I'm almost done with this first demographic block. One thing that is important is to change um, these little things here, Q1 and Q2. Um, these uh, correspond to the label um, your question will get uh, when you export it. So I usually export to, um, to Excel and to SPSS, and this will be the label that your question gets, um, or I mean the variable name. So um, for instance, this is going to just be named age, and this is just going to be named gender. So this will help you a lot, and then you don't have to look back at what was um, Q1 again, and what was Q2 again, because now you immediately know that this variable means age, and this variable means gender. Then another thing that's important when you want to export your data later on is um, that you want to know what kind of codes are given to these. Um, so you can choose for just um, exporting the label and then uh, for each participant you get the whole label, but you can also choose to um, export coding. And there's always coding uh, below this and you can view it with this button, recode values. Then you click on both to see what default recode values uh, these options, answer options got, and also the variable naming or variable label that it was given. So this all works really well, and one, two, three, four makes sense, but maybe you want to have something else like one, uh, zero, one, two, three. So you can change this if you want to, maybe have some specific coding, maybe prefer not to say it's kind of like a 999, or maybe a 7-7. Seven, seven. Um, so in my case, usually when it's a missing, but not a missing um, completely, but more like missing I didn't want to say, then usually I give it a 7-7 a seven, seven instead of a 9-9. Nine, nine. Um, so this really depends on your um, own preference, but you can change it, everything like this in Qualtrics. Okay, so now we're done with the demographic block, and then we start with um, entering the stress questionnaire. So best case scenario, you have a questionnaire at hand that you can just copy into this. Um, if you have a questionnaire that looks like most psychological questionnaires, meaning that they have several statements and then they have uh, a Likert skill to answer uh, all of these statements. In this case, it's helpful to um, create a matrix table. In a matrix table, um, you can create all of these statements and then if they are answered in the same, with the same Likert skill, this will be very helpful and will save you a lot of time instead of creating all one by one questions. Um, so it can be something like uh, true, neither true nor false or false. Well, this is helpful. Qualtrics is giving me some default again. So true, neither true nor fal uh, false or false statement. So um, here you um, copy the intro of your questionnaire and here we will call this stress questionnaire okay um, and then you uh, fill out all the statements from your questionnaire at this point I don't have an example questionnaire to show you um, but most questionnaires about stress um, include things like um, I feel stressed or I cannot relax or maybe I feel like something bad is going to happen. And then usually it's like 10 or 20 statements um, and participants can fill it out uh, by clicking on the um, Likert skill. Okay, uh, then maybe you want to have one other type uh, just for fun. So how stressed do you feel at this moment? And then we can call this stress, um, what is it, stress slider. And we only want one slider. And here you can say, not stressed at all. And 100 is extremely stressed. Okay, uh, there's a lot of things that you can uh, change here. So you can um, change, for instance, 
uh, the minimum here. You can enter uh, decimals if you want to. Uh, you can have grid lines. Uh, so there's a lot of things that you can do here. You can also add labels, stress level. Um, so there's a lot of things that you can do here again. And then um, this ends our questionnaire. And then um, we have this block that I told you I will talk about a little bit. So if you click this one, um, you can choose between the default message, which is always this one, or you can also enter a custom. You can also redirect it to maybe your website or the website of the study. Um, and you can even uh, include some kind of a response summary um, for the participants. Uh, for now, I will leave it to default. And then um, when we're happy with our questionnaire, it's time to preview it. So you do this with this button. And this preview is really helpful because it shows you what the participants will see when they complete the questionnaire on the screen, um, both for PC um, and for a tablet and phone. So it's very helpful. You can also fill it out to see if it works. Go to the next. And you see that this corresponds to every block. So, um, well, I'm not super. Um, this is not true. Um, and this is not true. Um, and then I am kind of like 50% stressed. Okay. And then we thank you for the time of your survey. Um, and then we, um, if we're happy with this, um, we can go back here um, and maybe there were some tiny things, we can change it. Uh, you can always go back here and restart it um, and try it out again, see the changes. And when you're really happy with it and you're done, you feel like you're done and it's ready, um, you hit here, publish. And then when you hit publish, um, you go into uh, the next step that I will talk about in uh, next videos, um, how to attract uh, participants, how to share it with your participants uh, and so forth. Uh, and also remember that this was a, a pretty easy questionnaire. Um, there's no skip logic or anything yet. Um, and in uh, next videos, I will also show you uh, some of the more advanced options of creating a questionnaire. This was really the basics. Um, and in the next video, I will show you more advanced options. Okay, thank you very much. If you have any questions for me about creating a Qualtrics questionnaire, you can always uh, send me an email or you can respond below uh, under this video.